Well, we'll start. Oh, good evening, everyone. My name is Rick Eisted, for those of you who may not know me. Um, I'm a, a proud member of the Rotary Club of Calgary Fish Creek. I also sit on the district um, learning and development committee responsible for these monthly club learning webinars, which seem to be gaining some popularity to the point where actually February, March, and April, we, we have two scheduled per month versus our normal one. So, um, and I will be your Zoom host this evening. Mm -hmm. Let me let some more people in here. Now, in the spirit of reconciliation, I would like to personally acknowledge that most of us who are online tonight on this session live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Sasika, the Kainai, the Pekani, the Sotina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. I would like to welcome and thank everyone for attending tonight's deep dive into the new District Grants website. Our presenters this evening are Craig Henderson, a member of the Calgary Downtown Club and Chair of the Grants Subcommittee, and Jamie Moorhouse, a member of the Calgary at Stam Rotary Club of Calgary at Stampede Park, and who is our chair of the District Rotary Foundation Committee. As usual, tonight's session is scheduled for one hour and it is being recorded. So everyone here tonight and everyone that registered will receive a an email from me later, uh, probably in the next couple of days with, with the link to the video recording. Um, if you please turn off your audio during the presentation so that we can minimize noise distractions. However, if you wish to leave your video on, please do so, that's your call. When it comes to um, questions, please use the chat button. I see that the Q&A has been activated as well in order to communicate with each other. Um, Jamie and Craig will address your questions as they come up. So if you have a question, there's a little button down at the bottom that says reactions. And if you click on that, you're gonna see a hand pop up. And if you click on that, uh, Jamie will be monitoring that. And then, then you'll be able to unmute yourself and ask your question. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Greg and Jamie. Take it away, gentlemen. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Rick. I'll uh, kick off just by saying that uh, I'll be running the uh, demo tonight. I'll be just sharing my screen here very quickly. Uh, so you'll be able to see all the things that I'm doing live. Hopefully I've got the scaling right on this. Let me just stop and share one more time to make sure that I'm getting just the window that I'm interested in here. That looks better. Can everybody see the uh, district uh, website that I've got up now? Uh, I do have a very wide monitor, so sometimes it, it uh, compresses on these Zoom meetings. I've just made things a little bit larger. Uh, I do have a set of talking points uh, here this evening, but I'm just going to wander through them. And uh, Jamie will keep tabs on, on our talking points to make sure I do hit everything uh, that I wanted to hit tonight as well. Uh, I'd like this as much as the Zoom will allow to be... Uh, a fairly interactive session, so I would encourage people to uh, chime in with the questions in the chat as we go uh, to make sure we cover everything. And as I said, I'm going to be walking through a good chunk of the functionality that the grants module uh, for, of Club Runner uh, provides for us uh, uh, to do the, the district grant applications. You know, because it is Club Runner, this means that the grants module is basically a component of the uh, District 53 website. So it should be fairly easy to, to find. Uh, hopefully it will be a marked improvement over the uh, system that we have been using for a number of years. It was a homegrown 
uh, system involving some uh, technologies that are very rapidly becoming obsolescent. Uh, one of the challenges with the old site that I'm hoping that we'll be able to address with the new one is uh, maintaining synchronous logins. So the old system required uh, you'd have a login that was standalone and not connected to Club Runner in any way. Uh, didn't mind particularly all the emails that I got asking for password resets, but I do know it was very frustrating for people to uh, not remember or uh, not know what their password was. So every time they want to get into the system, we'd be typically resetting a password. Uh, the other uh, significant problem uh, with the old website is was that uh, as Club Runner continued to evolve and be updated, our ability to keep uh, whatever synchronization we needed with Club Runner uh, we very quickly broke. And as a result, we were getting uh, ever increasing uh, out of date information on that old website. Hopefully the new one will uh, take care of a lot of those issues. Uh, based on what we've seen so far, uh, most people without a lot of help have been able to figure out how to get the grant applications submitted. Uh, so I'm very pleased about that. And uh, as you go through your grant applications, I certainly encourage you to reach out to me at any time and be more than happy to uh, get uh, you up and running on the on the new website. So what I've got on my screen right now is the uh, rotary5360.ca or our district website. Uh, it's one that many people uh, should know well. And our grants subcommittee has a landing page uh, that's built right into the District 5360 website. There are two links on the front page that will take you to it. Uh, the first is under uh, this upper menu here, Service Grants and Grants website. Uh, just so you know, uh, the district grants uh, subcommittee oversees uh, 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 global peace fellowships and global grant, uh, sorry, global scholarship uh, funding. These are separate websites. Uh, so you see the two of them linked there. And then for the district project grants and uh, district designated funds that go against uh, uh, global grants, uh, it's the grants website. So this link that you see right at the bottom of the list. The other place that you can get to it, there's a link on the bottom of the page as well, Rotary Grants, which will take you to the same location. So I'll click on the lower link to start. And this takes you to the landing page of the District Grants uh, subcommittee that we put together. We've been using this as really a collection point uh, for all of the uh, supplemental and uh, uh, information that we can uh, marshal together and as well we're putting up the uh, various point uh, uh, print sorry various forms uh, report documents uh, and also links to the uh, presentations that this uh, district grant committee does does uh, do so we kind of want this to be sort of your first stop or your your go-to location for uh, information about district grants and uh, you know, if there are any things uh, that you have questions about, hopefully you'll be able to find your answers uh, in some of the links here. But again, if not, by all means, reach out and we're, we're more than happy to, uh, to help out. All of the documentation that we had on the old site has now been migrated to this page. Uh, so things like the uh, multi-year uh, DDF spreadsheets that we used to maintain on the old site are on the new site as well. Uh, things like the uh, templates for the uh, Memorandum of Understanding, uh, that's on this site as well, uh, as well as, as other documentation that we hope is helpful to you. Uh, templates, for example, for a financial management plan, you'll find that on this website. And uh, I'll just click a few links here to show you uh, that you can download uh, your Club memoranda, Memorandum of Understanding directly from our landing page. This is much the same uh, type of form that you've seen uh, from us in uh, uh, years past. We've normally asked you to uh, print off the final page of this document, uh, sign it, scan it, and then upload it. And in, in the past, you'd have uploaded it uh, to the, uh, the old District Grants website. Uh, now what we're asking is that uh, the last page uh, just be mailed uh, to the District Grants Help Desk and you can see the uh, 
uh, address for that is there. This particular form uh, is now a fillable PDF, so it should take away the need to scan it. Uh, so you can apply an electronic signature if you wish. If you prefer to print out this page and uh, still sign it with a physical signature and uh, scan it or photograph it using your phone and send it back to us, all of those are acceptable ways of sending the, uh, the MOU to us. And as I said, there's nothing to upload uh, to a website, just uh, email it to the uh, email address that you see on the bottom of that, uh, that one page that we're interested in, in getting. And the form hasn't changed, right, Frank? It's the exact same form. It's, 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 it's mainly the same form. The, the things that update uh, would be the year, uh, the submission dates, uh, who signs it, uh, which each year is the uh, current president elect. Uh, so the person who will be your club president in the 2023-2024 rotary year. Uh, and as well, the president no nominee who will be your club president in the year following that. Uh, there's a link right beside it, uh, which will allow you to uh, send an email to the uh, district grants committee. And that uh, email is the one that uh, it's the same one that you saw on the bottom of the MOU page. Uh, so just clicking on this link will uh, will launch uh, your own email client to uh, uh, send a message pre-addressed uh, to the district grants committee. Uh, so that is there. And then the uh, the link that actually takes you to the uh, the club runner grants module uh, can be accessed by this button that says start an application. I'm just going to point to two other things. Oops, I think there might be a question. Oh, I was just, just going to ask you, Craig, if you can show us where the on that screen the financial plan management plan and those things are you're probably going there right now i was just going there exactly yeah so we've got uh, a couple of sections here one is the the general uh documentation that you'll see things like the district grants terms and conditions uh various resource uh documents that are provided by ri uh various uh and sundry miscellaneous items all kind of information that uh, should be helpful to you. The forms come a little bit below there. Uh, one of the documents that we're going to require that uh, the clubs submit this year is something called a financial management plan. And there's a template for that document uh, that's linked under this forms and applications section right here. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's a, a fairly straightforward document that encapsulates the uh, some of the rules and, and regulations that uh, that RI requires. Uh, so this is a requirement that's always been there, uh, but we're starting to uh, enforce the need for this document uh, uh, with this grant cycle. Talks about some of the things that uh, you need to do as a as a club. Uh, these are all reflected in the MOU as well. So so when you submit the MOU, you've agreed to uh, some of these things already. The main thing to uh, to keep in mind is that uh, where clubs run into trouble uh, is when they don't transition uh, the information that they have about their in-flight grants from one board to the next year's board. So a lot of the financial management plan is about ensuring that the incoming board, uh, because these projects can run for uh, two years, are aware of what the club has previously uh, bound itself to and what their obligations are in terms of maintaining the receipts, expense claims, uh, documentation, and, and so forth. So we are going to require as part of your uh, your applications this year that you do submit the financial plan and that document uh, is one uh, that will be uh, available to you uh, under this section called the uh, financial management plan template. The other thing uh, that I wanna draw your attention to here is that there's a form called the grant application club approval. It's a simple form, I'll show it to you here right now. Because the new system doesn't have uh, the more sophisticated workflow that the older system did, uh, which involved uh, when an application was ready for submission, uh, being uh, sending an email to the club president uh, to authorize the uh, club's participation in the project, 
rather than forwarding an email like that, what we're going to require now is that the club actually executes uh, a document that um, uh, indicates that the club president at least uh, is aware and authorizes and binds the club uh, to participating in, uh, in this particular grant. Uh, the things that it asks for would be uh, uh, just a confirmation of the funding that the club is going to commit to the project. Uh, the district designated funds that you're uh, requesting of us, total budget for the project. And if this is an application for DDF, district designated funds, in support of a global grant, uh, that the global grant number be attached as well and, and the name of the project. So as we work through these applications, uh, we'll get to uh, a bit of a discussion around how the, uh, the application is transmitted uh, to and from the district grants uh, committee. And one of the things that I will be saying is that we will come back to you at a certain point and ask for this uh, club approval form to be executed and forwarded to us. And when I say that, this is the form that, uh, that we'll be referring to. I think that is everything that was on the landing page to the district grants uh, website. So from here, I'll just jump into the grants module itself. And Rick has a hand up, I see. <laughs> Greg, I was just looking for clarification. Is it the president or the president elect that signs that approval form? Because the MOU is the president elect and the president nominee, correct? Yes, and it's and, and and Jamie, if I if I misstate this, please please jump in. But uh, the the MOU uh, binds the club uh, in Rotary year in this case twenty twenty three through twenty twenty five. So therefore, it is the president elect and the president nominee. But the al allocation of funds uh, to match actually occurs in this year, the 2022 Rotary year. Therefore, it is the current club president uh, who executes on, on that. I can see Thank James you. speaking, but he's muted. <laughs> Thank you. I had a question. Yes. It's Joanne. I'm following you and I'm also on my uh, screen on my computer and I missed where you found the form for the financial plan. Okay. Where is that? I'll just go back and, and show that again. So starting on the district's website, you can go to the district grants committee landing page through one of two links, the one on the bottom of the page, Rotary Grants or the one of the menu uh, under service grants, grants website. Here is the district committee's landing page and the okay. MOU uh, mm -hmm. is this link here. And the financial management plan is, I don't know if you can see my mouse sort of circling it. Oh, but yeah, yeah, right there. In the yeah, forms and application section. <laughs> yeah, I've got and the grant there. application uh, form is directly under it. Oh, okay. So these are yes. the two documents that we were we were talking about. Right. Okay, got it. Craig, uh, when when I am also logged in, and when I go to the application, it takes me to the club runner login. Yes. And when I go there, it says I have no access to it. Ah, I'm getting I'm getting to that. <laughs> okay. That'll be the next. That'll be the next thing I I cover. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so uh, when you go to the landing page uh, and, and go, sorry, from the landing page <laughs> to the grants module itself, uh, you're going to be asked to complete uh, this uh, information in the section called project details. Now there's a little bit of a wrinkle uh, here in that your club has to be fully enabled before you'll actually get to this. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, the grants module, similar to our older website, does keep track of the club qualifications. And from a club runner point of view, there's really two elements to it. Uh, one element is that the club has submitted uh, an MOU exactly like it was with the old website. And uh, uh, 
you, you'd email that to uh, to our help desk, and uh, ultimately somebody like myself will pick up that form and attach it to your club's file in Club Runner, and then mark the uh, the applicant uh, your club as being qualified. There's another element to this as well, and that is that Club Runner uh, requires that users individually be uh, enabled against the grants module. Uh, they use the term that users have to be trained, uh, but what we really mean by that and the way we interpret it is the users need to be added to the Club Runner module. So once those two items are, are complete, uh, then this form that I've got up right now should light up for you. Uh, but until those two conditions are met, that is, is not necessarily the case. So I've logged in as a test user. Uh, my name in this case is apply for a grant. Uh, and when I start to complete this form, one of the things it'll be asking for is a name of the project. So I'll just do test project. And then uh, a rotary year, 23-24. And here's where uh, you may have seen very quickly um, the, 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 the form filled in a little bit for us. So as soon as I added the uh, project year, it, it uh, made the term sponsoring club appear and it made the contact appear. And my test user, Mr. Apply for our grant, uh, is actually been set up as a member of the district. So here it shows Rotary Club 5360. Uh, once you're enabled for the system, it will show up with the name of your club. Uh, so all the clubs are, are potentially here. If I had logged in as the administrator, I actually would have seen the full list of all of the uh, qualified clubs. Uh, but this should pre-populate with the name of your club once everything is set up and should also populate with your name once you've, uh, once you've been enabled as a trained user of the system. Bob, question. <laughs> and Bob, I'm sorry, you, you are muted. <laughs> I think you mean me. I just want to know how you get enabled. Ah, okay. Um, the easiest way is just to drop me a note. <laughs> it's not really something that can be done. Uh, 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 it can't be done at the level of, of the clubs uh, because the adding of users is really uh, integrally tied with uh, the, the process of qualifying the club. So we do require an admin level access in, in order to add the users. Uh, so what I would encourage uh, anybody to do uh, is just reach out uh, to me with an email uh, with names of any users you'd like to have added on behalf of your club. It's, it's the easiest way to do that. It takes me all of five seconds to add a user to the, to the system. Typically, they do, users will discover they're not in the system the moment they start to try to do this, and then they realize they don't see their name in the list. So, uh, yeah, email me, and uh, I'll uh, I'll set that up. And it's not all it's not all, Craig. The email will go to me too. So we're yes. not putting that whole weight on Craig's shoulders. <laughs> one guy with the only access. Yes, yes, that's true. Okay, uh, Lynn, Lynn had a question. Lynn. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Uh, I know I've been trying to get on and it keeps telling me I'm, I'm not qualified or whatever. So thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. So I send an email to you, Craig. Um, is that the email that uh, just goes to the grants committee or is that a personal email? If you, you? send it to D5360 help, uh, I'm sorry, D5360 grants help desk, uh, that will auto forward to both Jamie and myself. Uh, okay, and as soon as we get that, then if I send the email, then I'm enabled, then I can apply for a travel grant, a global grant, a district grant, or anything. That's right, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, does yeah, the there's, president... There's really only the two keys to unlock the system, uh, one being uh, that the club, is, club itself is qualified through the submission of the MOU, and two, that the individual users are added. 
Okay, and I'm not clear about that. Okay, so I want to apply for DDF funding for a global grant. I need the MOU before I get enabled? Yes, it's exactly the same as, as before, yes. Okay, so I can't even get access to write up the project using the appropriate forms until I'm enabled? Correct. Oh, okay. So the very Good. first step is getting your existing president and your um, incoming president to authorize what you're applying for. Authorize the club to apply for grants in general. So your your, your club president elect and nominee uh, don't have to at this stage specify a particular project that you're interested in in uh, putting together. It's just enabling the club as an entity to participate in the grants. Okay, so this MOU is not the typical MOU that we get when we um, need all those forms filled out by the host oh, and international pro projects people. It is just an MOU that says our club is authorizing that we're going to apply for some grants. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so it's a very we never did that before. I don't think. Oh yeah, yeah. yes, we did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, because okay. one of the things that we look for uh, in the MOU is, is an attestation that you attended our grants seminar uh, back in in October. Right. So this is something that, that has been in the system pretty much since the, the beginning. Okay, so this is not, just, None of this has changed. Yeah, the process yeah, is exactly the same. But yeah. this form has to be filled out. So That's if correct. someone from my club attended the October training, which I'm pretty sure they did, then that would already be filled out. We don't do no. it automatically. Uh, so someone in your club uh, would download the form and fill it out and send it to us. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's always how it's been. You've always had to submit that MOU before you could apply for a grant. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but not, sometimes it wouldn't be me that would, it, I'd be writing the global grant. That's right. Yeah. Grant, but somebody else from the international committee might have attended the grant seminar. That's right. Yeah, fair. Okay. Yeah. So, so the difference is that, you'll have to email us to get trained as club runner calls it. Okay. Is there a way for us to check whether that was already filled out? What club are you, by the way? I, I can look after. Rotary Club of Red Deer. Uh, I, I can check just that after this and, and, and I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. And I did send a note uh, yesterday or the day before about that because it was kind of confused about yeah. what happened. Yeah, I, I held off on answering because I hunched you'd be asking the question tonight. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to get to the site so I can begin yep. uh, constructing okay. the, the okay. application. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so moving on, we talked a little bit about uh, you know, once your club is qualified by virtue of having completed and are accepting the MOU, uh, and you've been added as an individual user, you'll be able to access this screen uh, with the project details. And what we ask is that you uh, give us a uh, project name uh, that's uh, descriptive of the project. We've got a little bit of a naming convention here that we'd like you to follow. So in our old system, you had the ability to say, I'm applying for a, a VTT or I'm applying for a district project grant or I'm applying for DDF for a global grant. In this system, they really are all one, uh, you know, one, one grouping of projects. We don't have that granularity. So uh, to make it easier for us to tell what you're looking uh, for, we ask you to start the project name uh, with one of the codes that you see in the, uh, the, the uh, introductory material just above it. So for instance, uh, I think when said a uh, travel grant, so we'd be interested in having you start your project name by putting the three letter code that we've created uh, representing the project grant, the TEG, uh, just a travel grant, as being the first component of your project title. As before, and on the old site, we used to ask you uh, to identify whether or not you're going to apply for this as your top priority or second priority project. 
So we ask you to provide that kind of information as well. It's by going P1 or P2. The idea here is we will try to fund all of the P1 projects first. And then as funds permit, we'll, uh, we'll go through and uh, try to fund uh, the club uh, priority two projects as well. And in our grants qualification seminar, we do say things along the lines of, if you don't tell us what the priority is, then we won't fund either of your projects. So be sure you let us know uh, if you're applying for more than one of a project type, or even if you're applying only for one, it's your P1, your, your one priority or your, or your two. Travel grant, in this case, I'm just making this uh, title up to Haiti, for, for example, uh, uh, will, will be an example here. Uh, looks like a hand has gone up again. Yes. Uh, is that mine, possibly? Yeah, Lynn. Yeah, Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if you're applying as a global grant lead club, which is GGL, right? Yeah. yeah. And you have a vocational training team, then yeah. you've got two, two abbreviations or whatever is that correct mm, not not quite uh so the vtt that you see listed here on the screen uh there are two types of vtt this one is if you were applying for a standalone vtt as a district project grant you can apply here uh using vtt as the title if you're embedding a VTT component in your global grant application, you would just add that as a line item in your global grant. So it is a single project application in the, uh, uh, in the uh, example you're citing, you'd be the global grant with a VTT component to it. Right, but I would just use the GGL and I see there's not P1 or P2 beside that. That's correct. So we don't prioritize uh, our global grants the same way that we apply, uh, that we uh, prioritize the district grants. Okay, can you explain why or just I, I don't understand that? Is that because the global grants and DDF funding are on a first come basis or what? In, in yeah. part, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure you'll get to what how that all works so i want to apply for ddf for a global grant that's got a district vocational training team my project name i'm going to say go global grant lead club that yeah yes it, it would look like this okay which slightly different terminology on the rotary international site that would be the international club right as opposed to the lead club yes okay thanks Okay. <laughs> now, there's something I wanted to touch on that's that's uh, quite important here. Uh, there's that there's a bit of text that you can see here uh, that comes from Club Runner. Uh, that this text doesn't reflect what we're trying to do, and I've already asked a number of times to Club Runner uh, if this text can either be edited or removed. So far, they've said no. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to ask you to ignore this text. What it says is, please uh, give us the year in which the project is due to complete. What we actually want is the year that you're applying for the project. So, put, so, so ignore the text that you see. Uh, so for our current grants year, the project year should be 2023, 2024, the year that you're applying for the grant and, and not the completion date. So this is misleading. I'll try and get rid of it, but in the meantime, ignore it. <laughs> uh, the rest of this is pretty simple. Uh, the country, um, a brief description of the project. Uh, so this. So when he says brief description, that's kind of the elevator pitch of what pitch, your project yeah. is. There's no real details required. Just just kind of what it is yeah yeah and um, martin the budget martin has a question yeah. Yeah. uh craig i when you say a brief description is there a number of characters that uh, that you're limited to a uh, number of letters in the, in the description uh, i i haven't seen one it's it, it, it's it's pretty extensive uh it'll easily go to several hundred characters <laughs> okay uh some point, uh, I had actually thought to try and count them to see what it is, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's uh, a very common database constraint would be something like 2000 characters. 
So I'd have okay. to see if it goes that big. Uh, but I haven't seen anybody running out of space here either. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Craig, um, you don't want then an attachment with the whole program proposal or what the purpose and objectives and goals are that we would be inserting on the RI site. You just want a couple paragraphs saying, as we get a little farther, we'll actually show you there, there are additional fields to fill mm -hmm. in. What we don't necessarily need is the old style printed uh, application forms that we used to have on our old website uh, that, um, uh, you know, that, that you, you would have attached as, as part of the project application. We do ask uh, for a lot of the same information. So it'll be things like, uh, you know, who the beneficiaries are, uh, you know, what kind of assessment has been done. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to show you that fairly yeah. quickly here. Uh, there should be a little bit of a project budget and uh, uh, your, your partners, your, your, your other organizations. This, this page should just be kind of considered as, as like the introduction with, yeah. a, with a brief, like a little, small executive summary. All the details are going to come once you hit submit. Mm -hmm. And every single thing that was asked for before is asked for again. It just, it's in a bit of a different layout. Yeah. So one of the questions that I have had uh, from people who have started applications uh, using the new site is at what point has the project file uh, been started? And at what point uh, does the district grants committee begin to see the application? And the answer is as soon as you hit the submit button on, on, uh, on, on this page here. So by clicking this submit. Just before you hit submit. Oh, too late. Anyway. <laughs> yes, I can go uh, back. So just on the back there, the, where it said uh, estimated budget, that's the total budget, not the amount of money you're at, of DDF you're asking yeah. for, right? Yes, that is correct. So I need clarification on that. You mean the total budget with RI funding Everything, with yeah. DDF? Everything, yes. With, yes. So you, you have to work out the whole budget. Yes. Okay. Which, yes. Yeah. And in Canadian funds? Yeah. Uh, not not if it's a global grant. It's U.S. funds. Okay. District grants are Canadian funds, and you're not tied to that. Like you're not locked in that. If the budget changes, it, it's not the end of the world. Go back and change that number. Yeah. But you do have to enter something there to go on to the next step. Okay, and you're telling me if it's a global grant, it's U.S. funds. That's, That's right. right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let let let. Let's jump to, oops, I've lost it here. Let's go back. This is a project 2024. I think because you already hit submit. Because I already hit submit. And another yeah. page. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, one of the other questions that we get is in addition to um, when does the district grants committee first become aware that there is a, a project in flight? Uh, and it is at this point uh, here. The second question that comes along is, okay, is this enough information? And, and the answer is no, it's not. Uh, so what will happen is in effect, uh, by clicking on the submit, but submit button, you, be, you initiate a dialogue is, is kind of the way I'll say it between your project and the grants committee. And we've got, now got the ability to begin assessing the application. Uh, as soon as you click the submit, we can send the application back to you uh, with a little bit of, uh, okay, we're going to need additional information. Uh, and then you can send that to us and we can actually iterate back on back and forth on this a couple of times, which is a little bit different than what the old system did. Uh, so I think one of the attractions of this new system is we'll be able to work with you to say, okay, now we do need this piece of information and we do need, you know, that to, to, to fully round out and flesh up your, your application. 
as a regular user, uh, you've got the ability to see the, the, the grants that are in flight for your club. Uh, so if I click on uh, this button here, My Club Grants, uh, you'll actually see I've been playing a little bit with this. So I've got a, you know, a couple of uh, projects, but the one that we just created uh, a few minutes ago, uh, when I click the sub, uh, Submit button, uh, we created a project. It's called uh, GGL name of project. You don't have to wait for us to necessarily get back to you. Uh, but one of the things you'll be able to do is go in and, and, and start entering information uh, on the project uh, right away if, if you've got it. The first thing you'll see is that um, the information that you'd already submitted is echoed back to you in this case. Uh, but you'll notice a couple of things. Number one is that the rotary year is, is gone off this application, uh, meaning that uh, once you pick a rotary year, that year is set. If you got the wrong year, you pretty much have to delete the project application and start over again. Uh, but other than the year, you can uh, update the name of the project, you can update the description, and as you begin to you know, work your way through the budgeting, you can update the budget numbers as well. One of the big benefits, I think, of the new system uh, is the fact that we're not requiring supporting clubs to submit their own applications uh, against a, uh, uh, a, a pooled grant, in this case, let's say a pooled district grant. So on our old site, what we would make you do is the lead club would prepare an application uh, with a budget uh, and, and uh, submit that. Uh, any of the supporting clubs would then have to create their own applications, uh, in effect, cloning the information that the district that the the lead club provided, and submit that as a as a separate application. Uh, we don't have to do this here. So I think as you work with your partners, and if you and if you struggle with this, you can certainly reach out to the grants committee. Uh, any clubs interested in pooling and supporting a lead club will only have to have their uh, their application uh, combined uh, with uh, with the lead club. And what I really mean by that is as we're working together here, we can add a club. So if, uh, for example, uh, the the lead club in this case, uh, because I'm the test user or just happen to be a club called Rotary 5360, I can add, in this case, myself as a contact representing the downtown club as a, par as a participant in your, your grant. So we start to build out who our partners are and what their contributions are so that the single pooled grant actually appears just in one application. So that, that should streamline this for, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for clubs. So if you've got one lead club and a number of supporting clubs, uh, you, you can add all of your, uh, your participants here. I see another hand up. Yes, Lynn. And you are muted. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Lynn is muted. I'll, I'll have to keep going here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, there I you go. Just wanted to say that it says local clubs. Does that mean 5360 clubs or does yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, so yes, if it you does. have other clubs outside of 5360, where do they go on there? The next section down, the other partners. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and so, for, so in effect, this district. list is filtered on, on clubs in the district. Uh, so our local partners are clubs in 5360. And anybody outside of 5360 is the other partners here. And when you click on this link, you'll see it's actually much more open so that you'll be able to type uh, you know, more contact information. I think Kurt has a question. Yeah, yeah. Kurt? Yeah, my question is on... Uh, the supporting grants. So here you are, and you've put in two different clubs that are going to be supporting you on your project. 
how do they confirm that? I mean, it could be you wishful thinking. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's that's where the club uh, yeah. club approval form is going to come in. You're still going to have to get that signed by the supporting uh, club and upload yeah, it yeah. to that project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So for I'm, glad, I'm, gl I'm glad we got to that. Yeah. I, I do have one eye on the time here and the fact that we only allocated an hour for for this, and it's been a fantastic discussion. So I don't want to cut it short. But the idea here is those individual sheets. And remember, I said uh, we at the beginning we'd come back to the club approval off the club authorization approval form. Uh, what we would do is we would collect these and add them in the documents section. So we'll have the one for the lead club and then each of the supporting clubs that have, have uh, agreed to commit uh, to support the project will have their own approval form. We'll collect those and we'll bundle them into the application. Now, the different clubs won't have the ability to access your uh, uh, your application. So it's only going to be the lead club that actually sees this application. So we've got two options. Uh, one is the supporting club can send their authorization letter to the lead club and the lead club would be able to uh, add the various supporting clubs uh, to the file here, or they can send it to the committee and, and we'd be happy to upload it for them. Uh, but that's how we check the approval of the supporting clubs is by collecting up these club approval forms. And that applies for global grants or pool district grants. A does. lot of clubs will, will pool community development grants for local projects. So I'm okay, just, thank you for clarification. I'm looking to see whether I've got one of these. I'll use the example as a, of a, an MOU document. It, it's the wrong example, but uh, and it would appear in the list here. So we would ultimately have the list, uh, including all of the uh, the supporting letters from the uh, from the various uh, supporting clubs. So what I wanted to walk through uh, really fast here, because we are starting to run uh, short on time, uh, the details, we've really talked a fair bit about that already. This is the, the initial piece uh, with the um, uh, project information. We've identified local clubs uh, as we know them. Any other partners, which could be clubs outside the district or it could be other organizations uh, beyond Rotary, this is the, the kind of information that we would collect in this section. I want to draw our attention to this next section called the uh, uh, the application itself. So here is where we collect the details of the projects uh, that we've got uh, going on here. I see Bill has a question. I think in the interest of time, I'm going to maybe defer them till uh, eight, eight o'clock just to ensure that we get through all the bits that I wanted to touch on and then allow people to uh, sign off as they need be. And if anybody would like to stay on, by all means, uh, we're happy to do that. Uh, if you think in terms of the paper forms that we used to have, uh, we're, we're basically asking the same questions here. Uh, so you'd be able to go in and provide a description of the project. You'd identify the beneficiaries, the, the area of focus and so forth, uh, community assessment, uh, sustainability pieces, any cooperating organizations, and a bit of an implementation plan. So after your initial submission, uh, if your initial submission was only those project details, in all likelihood, the response you'd hear back from the uh, committee is, okay, now let's fill in the, these other uh, uh, telescoping or collapsing sections under the, the general description, uh, just to ensure that we've got all of the particulars of your project uh, laid out. Uh, we've touched a little bit on 
the budget. Actually, no, we haven't yet. So uh, one of the other things that we're going to be interested in collecting from you uh, are your expected expenses on the project and your sources of income. Uh, so the project financing, and this could look like uh, you know, contribution And I'm just making up numbers here to sort of show how this will appear. Uh, And I'll maybe do one more just to reflect the fact that we had uh, more than one club supporting here. And one other thing I'll show here is, and again, we're going really fast, the grant that you're actually applying for. And so we build out a budget uh, that you can see for the uh, global grants. This would be an amount in, in US dollars. These numbers don't make any sense at all, but just to give you the, the idea that you can add lines to the budget representing the contributions from the various clubs. These should match to the contributions that were authorized in the uh, club, op club approval form uh, that, were, uh, that were submitted. Any of the significant expenses uh, that you know about, you can add as, as budget items for your project right out of the gate. Uh, there's another section here uh, that's worth filling in any of the project documents. And this was the, the one example that I already started with was the approval document from uh, the supporting club. Any other participating letters, uh, budgetary documents that you'd like to submit, Excel sheets, these can all go into the project application uh, here. The final thing that I wanted to touch on is there's another link here, this project overview, which actually then summarizes nothing to input uh, at, at this uh, level, but this gives you, uh, in effect, a generated uh, a report of all the information that you've put in in regards to your project, uh, suitable for printing out, uh, which is the main reason that you do this. But if you so, if you do need a hard copy of your project application, this is the easiest way to get it. Uh, just click print, and you'll be able to print this this off. Uh, this has all of the sections that we kind of worked through here uh, to uh, to complete the application. As you send information on, um, the, the submission is automatically updated. So the, uh, the district committee uh, will see the uh, additions to your project file as you make them, and we can continue to monitor the file. And uh, if there's anything that we spot that is missing, we can send uh, the application back to you uh, with requests for, uh, for additional uh, project details. Uh, otherwise, the uh, final step in this process uh, would be for the district committee, once the project is complete, uh, to approve the project, which we would do in the case of the district uh, block projects uh, on the uh, submission of the block grant, and uh, uh, payment will be uh, on its way following that. There is a little bit more to it, uh, nothing that we'll need to worry about here in the immediate short term. Uh, and that is this application also provides the, uh, the ability uh, to collect up the project uh, reporting uh, like we had uh, with the older uh, district uh, uh, website. So you can write a report uh, here. You can attach any documentation that you need to as well. Uh, so when we go to complete the reporting, uh, you'll be doing it on this site. 
Did want to caution, though, at, uh, at this point, uh, that we're still using the older uh, rotary5360.org website uh, to, uh, to track uh, the reporting for all of, our all of our projects that are currently in flight. Uh, so uh, reporting for uh, 2022 year and earlier uh, district grants still goes into the, the Rotary District 5360.org website. Jamie, did I miss anything on the, on the main list? Um, I think the only thing uh, that might be beneficial is back on that budget tab. Yeah. Uh, particularly people that are doing global grants will be familiar with this as we don't want to make more work for us. Uh, but one of the, the expected expenses, uh, if you're doing, if you've got a laundry list of expenses, especially if you're mm -hmm. doing a global grant, um, there's really no need to re-enter everything here. I would suggest that you add a budget item, say budget as per attached, put in the big number at the end, and then upload the Excel sheet that you've used to make your budget so that you don't have to go through and enter another hundred lines of, of stuff on there. And the same thing can be done for the uh, um, expected income. Like if you've got Excel, if you've got it all laid out nicely in the Excel sheet, you don't necessarily have to re reinvent the wheel here. Because with this system, uh, we should have eliminated uh, the uh, that two megabyte upload problem. So we should be able to upload to your heart's content on this site. Okay, I'm just gonna look at the uh, Q&A and at the chat here just to... Uh... Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, well, I hope I've answered Lynn's question in the chat, and I think maybe just start with Bill and answer the question because there's Bill, uh, Robert, and Lynn have questions still. So, right. if we start with Bill and and go in order, then okay, we will answer everything. Yeah. So before I, I do that, I'll just say uh, we've reached the uh, top of the hour here. So that's it for uh, the things that I did want to show this evening. Uh, so if people would like to drop off, uh, by all means, uh, if people like to stay on, uh, we're happy to, uh, to continue on past eight o'clock to, uh, to answer uh, the questions that, uh, that, that come up. Uh, so with that, uh, thanks everyone for attending. Hope this was useful. And uh, we will have the recording of this available so that you can review it again at your, at your convenience. And uh, yeah, th thanks very much. All right, uh, we'll start with Bill. I think he's had his hand up the longest, Bill Skinner. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, if you would go back to the uh, detail, no, not the details page. Uh, which one do I want? The, uh, yes, the details page. And it's I'm looking at the other partners section in the details page. Yes. And I'm wondering, do we really have to list other contributing clubs when you say other partners, clubs outside the district? Because those clubs outside the district are also listed in the budget. Um, I'm trying to avoid duplication of work for myself. Yeah, <laughs> understood. Uh, well, for a global grant, you probably don't. Because well, like you said, all that info is going to be inside your global grant application anyway. So you think I can ignore that and the other, and even for example, the uh, cooperating organizations, they're listed in another section as well too, with more details on them, right? Uh, yes. So, I'm going to assume that you're going to see my application eventually, and I'm going to leave those things out in one of the two places, usually here under other partners, when I know there's more details about them otherwise. The other nearby yeah. question uh, in the section of add a partner, 
I started doing this before I realized that they were going to be present in another place. And I did send you an email, Craig, saying, how do I get rid of something? Right. And, and I've got a, a, a club from another district listed in other partners. And I wanted to delete them now. And there's no way to delete them. If I make, or if I made an error somewhere, how do I, I can edit, but I can't delete. They should be deletable uh, if they're not uh, either one of two things. We either haven't quite got your permissions set correctly uh, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or you can't, in which case uh, we'd be more than happy to, to help out. But I, I would have expected uh, that under this actions menu, there's a little drop down here that, sh that should allow for, uh, for deletion. When so I do that on my application, all it says is, it, all it gives me is edit. It does not give delete. In that case, you may not have enough permissions, so we can look at that. Um, mm -hmm. We're more than help, happy to help yeah. you delete that. It's not critical because I, once you're agreeing that I don't have to put those uh, other district clubs in there, then I can just ignore that. It doesn't matter if it's in two places. That's right. Yeah. Our, our goal is really to try and, uh, well, we're trying to do a couple of things. So number one is you know, work with the uh, functionality that Club Runner gives us out of the box so that we don't attract a lot of overhead of uh, trying to maintain something custom like we, we got stuck doing with the old one. I, I, to me, this, this system is, is really intended to give you a couple of different ways of doing things. Like if it's fairly straightforward and you don't have a big long spreadsheet, maybe just enter the values. But if you have a spreadsheet that has things more itemized in it, you know, doing a single roll up under the expenses, for example, is perfectly acceptable. But I think our general um, you know, philosophy here is no, we don't want you to uh, uh, delete or sorry, uh, duplicate uh, things over and over again. We just need enough information basically uh, to complete the assessment of the application. Uh, we might ourselves make a couple of uh, tweaks to the, the application just if it helps us sort things. Uh, but we're certainly not looking uh, you know, for responses for every single field that, that you can imagine. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next hand, I saw, I'm just going to go in order as I saw the hands go up, so I will get to everybody. The next hand I did see go up uh, was listed as uh, Bob Weens. Yeah, but it's Michael Bob. I don't know why every time I <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes when I saw your yeah your your image before, I said, that's not Bob. <laughs> Testing it. Back okay. in also known as Bob Weens. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Almost all of the detailed information that's asked for for global grants is also in the global grants exactly in that format. Why do you need it as well? Because we're doing an assessment uh, as, as to whether or not uh, we're going to award funding from our pool. Now, to be sure, we can actually look up a lot of that information and cross-reference it our, ourselves. And uh, if that makes things easier, I'm you know, more than happy to, to do some of that legwork. Uh, but we do need uh, enough of an audit trail that justifies why we committed the DDF, just as RI needs uh, enough information to, to approve the global grant. Uh, it's, so, it's not so. any different than what we asked for now. Yeah. Like you have to put all that info on, a, on uh, your DDF application now, well, I and know. which isn't as detailed as your RI application is going to be. That's just, it's, it hasn't changed. Right. What we asked for hasn't changed. Yeah, I'm still asking why you asked for it, but that was an answer. I understand the answer. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Lynn, I think, was next. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, uh, accolades to you, Craig and, and Jamie. You're very courageous to take on a major website change. Like, <laughs> you know you are going to be just inundated with questions. So uh, thanks for yep. doing that. I think <laughs> it's a step forward. And as people who have been working with the previous system for years are moving to a new one, it's going to take some adjustments. It will. Yeah. I'll try to do the best not to be a burr in your saddle and to help move things forward. And as soon as I can get access, I'm looking forward to playing with this. But tell me, and it's because I've been, uh, uh, I've lost out because of this. When I read the guide for grants, that was put out, I think October, 2022. I'm gonna assume that's the most recent one. 
Um, and it says all global grants applications have to be in April 1st. You can't send them in early, right? And it's a first come basis. And yet this system sounds like I could send you and I'm all ready to go. I could send you all the stuff tomorrow and it would be a collaborative process between my club and the committee. So I'm a little confused about that. Um, at what point can I feel comfortable that I have com completed my application? Does that make sense? Because it, it does say in that guide, yeah. Yeah. April 1st mm -hmm. is when um, they're due and it's That's, on a first come basis. And I'm a little confused by that now. Yeah. So that, yeah, April 1st is, yeah, the opening day for global grants. So any, you can submit an application anytime you want before that, but we're gonna assume that they were done on April 1st when, we, when it comes time to, to dole out the money on them because it's first come first serve. So there's no advantage. I mean, there's a lot of advantage to doing it early because the, the global grants team can have a chance to assess it early and get back to you with any questions. But it, it so if there's 10 applications in, that came in before April 1st, those 10 are gonna be considered April 1st. And then like, they won't be at the front of the list. They won't jump the queue. They're all just April 1st. Okay. And, and we That's can see them in rank you. order, so we so we know that we know the order in which they came in. <laughs> okay. So may... At some point, do I press a submit button, and that's my official submission, even though no, I have had no, negotiations no, with you in the committee? No, they have that no, they All right. yeah. The official oh, submission uh, actually occurs uh, right up at the at the front. Uh, so. Someone, on, I'm just going to mute Graham here for a second. Um, your your application is is deemed submitted actually the moment you click that that on that first page. You, you've got an application that's uh, that's in flight and has been received by the district and is considered submitted. So there's really no finalized button if 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 you want to think of it that way for your application. So the application is is live and submitted the moment you click on that first button, and we'll just continue to uh, to work through it. And uh, you know, the, the next step after that is is to approve the grant. Okay. So what's with the April first first come? I'm just going by what it said in the handle. Yeah. So yeah. so so Craig, if I may throw yes. a, a comment. Okay, the April 1st is the opening date, not the deadline. Right. Mm -hmm. That's important because you can submit it April 15th, April 30th, June 30th, but there may or not be- Or March any, 15th, right? Or my, however, it's first come first serve, like you said, and if the money runs out, if you submit June 30th, you may not get funding. The sooner to April 1st you, Submit it, the more likely you are to get funding. Okay. But the question I, if, if some, if, how do you determine if people submit in March, how do you determine who is first in line on April 1st? If there's more money, more money being asked for on April 1st from everybody who submitted in March, how do you determine who gets it first? We we can we, we can see the the applications in, in rank order in which they were submitted. Uh, <laughs> so the time so, of when you submit before April first matters. Well, so Is anything that happened question. before I think anything that happened before April first would be considered uh, submitted at. Uh, whatever time they open. I think it's noon, April 1st is when it's supposed to open. So anything prior to April 1st would be considered submitted at noon on April 1st. And anything after noon, April 1st, yeah. we'll know what time you've submitted. So then he's back to Which, the question. If you've got more applications uh, that are all stacked up and look like they were submitted simultaneously and they all bear the timestamp April 1st at noon, and we're out of and they exhaust the available DDF. I think the question is, how how are we going to pick our favorites? 
Well, that uh, we don't, we're not picking favorites. Yeah. We're, we're using, there's a, on the website, there is a, um, like a scorecard for how, how projects are evaluated. So, so the, the group would have, the global grants team would go through all of those applications and score them until we, at, at, if we've run out of money on day one. I mean, it, it, again, that, that's no different than it used to be. Everybody used to apply April 1st, and when we ran out of money, we ran out of money. If Has that never, ever happened that we've run out of money on April 1st? We've run out of money on April 2nd. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was <laughs> one of those. <laughs> yeah, like last year, we ran out of money on, I think, April 2nd. So, so it is important. And now... That's so that hasn't changed. The, it's exactly the same. What has changed, it gives you the opportunity though, is if you, with the new system, because uh, it's set up so that they could actually have a back and forth with the assessment team, if you want to start your, your project early, it gives you more chance to get in and out with making sure all the info is bang on and everything's correct. And so that we don't on April 1st have to start from scratch. You can send in an incomplete application just to uh, have a marker to reserve a spot for April 1st. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be in good order in order to uh, be considered as a contender on April 1st. Right, it does have to be complete. Like there can't be anything left blank. Is that what you're saying, Gail? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it still has to be completed. And all the documents have to be there. Your club approval forms have to be in. Uh, the other thing would be uh, to take note is if you've got supporting grants with to your global grant as a lead club, all those supporting grants are going to need to be in when you're right by April 1st. There's, if they're not in on April 1st, then they're not going to count towards that project. Which is also gives some little pressure because, for example, last year we had a project where there were some supporting grants applied for, but the lead club didn't get their, theirs in before April 1st. So, it, so it's all, all about timing, as, as it always has been, but it's even more important now because there's really only one application and then a couple of, couple of papers saying, yeah, we're on board with it. So that lead club has to be on the ball right away and has to get all the supporting clubs, uh, uh, all their info in there before April 1st or whatever date you're gonna submit it. Okay, there are a couple of questions that have come through the chat uh, while, while we've been talking here. So I'm just gonna go through them. Uh, one from uh, Christina Castro in my club uh, says here, three years ago, the club of High River and the downtown club wrote a global grant proposal uh, for a project in Mexico, the club in Mexico, and ours decided to stop the process due to the pandemic. Uh, can they use the same proposal or are there changes? Uh, I'm going to say that well, the, uh, the existing application is probably in another system, assuming it's for a DDF. Yeah, yeah you're going to have to, you can copy and paste everything from the old proposal. Oh, sorry, it's a global start grant. A new proposal. Yeah. No, I misread it. It's a global grant proposal. So I'm not sure off the top of my head if, a, say, a three-year-old uh, in-flight project application for a global grant uh, is still going to be on the grants, the grants.rotary.org. It may be, but technically you, you only have two years from the time you start a global grant application to submit it at RRI. So, so it should be that original one from three years ago should be gone. Okay. So if they still have the inform information handy, they'd be able to copy and paste it into a, a new application. Sure. 
And I yep. would expect it's the same, uh, you know, for the uh, for the club runner website for the district grants committee. You'd you'd need to do the same. Yeah. And the fact that we've sort of switched systems indicates they they may yet find if there was an application for for global grant DDF on the old website, it's probably still there. But you'd be able to grab it and copy it and paste it into an application on this new website. Yeah. And I would assume at some point, whoever was doing that global grant probably downloaded a PDF of that grant anyway. So you should be able to open that up and copy and paste out of it too, if you can't find it online. Okay. Okay, that's everything from the chat. There's a few in the uh, Q&A as well. Uh, I'll pick the, the two that you had submitted, uh, Lynn, right there at the top of the list here. With the details section, would it not make sense to copy and paste all the information that would have been uh, and put it into the RI site? So if you're starting your global grant application on the RI website, a lot of the information is going to be common uh, between the application here and the application that goes on to the, uh, the grants.rotary website. Uh, so I would expect copying and pasting, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, copy and paste away. Yeah, it appears, unless I'm missing something, that this new district site doesn't allow you to upload documents, or am I incorrect on that? No, it, it does. It, it does. does. You know, okay. We were running a little short on time, so I sort of brushed past that quickly, okay. Okay. but it, it, it certainly does. So right. things, yeah. like things like cooperating letters, you. yeah, you'll be able yeah, to upload all, all of that. that. Upload all that stuff. Yeah, it's a separate tab once you get past that first uh, first detail page. And there's a bunch of tabs, applications. Uh, oh, yeah, you can show it down here. So it's got yeah. details, application, budget. So when you go to documents, you can upload anything to there. Right. And for those of us that haven't been able to get access, of course, this is difficult to see. But once yeah. we're given access, then we can see all that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and another one from you, Lynn. Uh, there are many website links uh, on the grant site to outdated links. Can they be deleted? Uh, so anything that we find that's uh, no longer uh, relevant on, on the, uh, the district site, we will take down. Uh, it looked like based on Bill's comment, though, that you might not have access uh, to delete uh, expired documents from your own application. So if that's the case, uh, we, we can certainly help with that. Uh, Patricia asked, I'm just gonna stop sharing so I can see the, uh, Patricia's still on. I don't think so, Craig. I think she's left, yeah. Uh, it was a question of where do we reconcile the grants? Uh, not sure what that means, but uh, uh, we've got our own processes uh, for uh, for reconciling the grants. Uh, probably the, the the cheekiest answer to that is in our Excel spreadsheets is <laughs> where a lot of that reconciliation takes place. And uh, Judy has a hand up. Do we have okay. <laughs> Unmute. Okay. I started off by saying thank you. So I'll say it again when I okay. can be heard. <laughs> um, a question has come to mind with record management, like with our youth grants and reports and any of the district grants, actually. That was already always there on the district website. So what's going to happen to those old? grants so the really old ones well uh, seven years yeah so they'll probably be uh rolled up into an archive file and uh posted on club runner okay on, on the district club runner site okay thank you Greg. 
I have a question. Um, it's Rick here. Um, how long has this Club Runner grants module been in existence? The documentation has a timestamp of 2014 on it, so I'm guessing it may have been around that long. Uh, looking back over the evolution of it over the last few years, it hasn't changed that much. Uh, so I would describe it as a fairly mature project product. And do we know of other districts experience with this? Have, have most of adopted it? I mean, it seems like a fantastic step forward, but as Lynn has said, you know, this, you guys are going to be pretty busy, I think, on email and phone just because it's new. Um, it, it's like anything, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, so yeah. You really, you know, it's important for people to get on as soon as they can and start working with it and learn how to navigate through it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had that experience just learning, you know, uh, how to access Club Runner for other activities. Yeah. I guess all I can offer you know, in that regard is, uh, so far what I've seen, the, vo the volumes are really no worse than what I've had to deal with on the old website. Oh, okay. uh, the difference being the old website was 100% me all the time. Uh, once uh, Roger Huff left the uh, the district, this at least uh, you know there's you know one of one of our prime motivators for uh, for moving off that is uh, the, the incredible uh, risk for failure. Uh, given that you know, you know, only myself was the only one who knew how how it worked, <laughs> this way you know because it is more club runnerish, uh, we've got much better. Uh, capability to plan for succession, to plan for backfill coverage. <laughs> I cannot count the number of vacations I've been on when I've had to field a phone call from someone back in Calgary uh, because they're stuck on the grants website. <laughs> how how helpful has Club Runner been in terms of supporting this module? They don't make any commitments at all to customize so they're basically saying what you see is what you get it's out of the box which is not a bad way to go uh, but in terms of actually answering questions around the club runner module they're pretty good okay. so if it's a question of you know how how do i enable a user they're, they're right on top of questions like that uh, but if it's well we need four or five different new fields in the uh in the in the uh, the application they're probably not going to entertain that because they want to get all districts kind of on a on a sort of standard uh configuration so that there's not uh, that level of custom support imagine if enough uh districts ask for a specific feature uh it would probably go to uh some kind of a technical backlog process that would ultimately lead to a product enhancement for uh, for all all districts I think Stevens had his hand up for a while. Yes, he has. I, I couldn't see him for, for, for a minute. There, there he is. All right, Greg. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to that. ask if there's a club level version of this that could be integrated with the district sometime in the future so that the clubs can kind of manage their projects as well. Not that I've seen like a, a, a club specific version of it. So the uh, the module itself is hosted at the district level, uh, but you'll be granting, in this case, uh, a greater degree of individual Rotarian access to the site than you would get to, to the district site. So uh, you know, within the grants module, uh, anybody who has been trained should have you know, full read write access to the module you know, uh, you know, subject to their, their club's area. So you should be able to uh, manage club level uh, documentation uh, within this module. Uh, it actually has a document management vault uh, that sits separate from the main one that it's po that's powering the district website. And it looks like uh, our end users get full rewrite access to that. So not that I've seen a club level one, but the district level one should give you enough uh, permissions to be able to do whatever you'd like to do to, to manage your own club projects. 
And your, your other question, Steve, is about the confirming members are trained. Uh, we should probably, yes. the train, club runner calls it trained. We should really just think of it as enabled. We just have to turn, you have to tell us that you want on and we'll, we'll, we'll make you trained so that you can get the, on. The reason I'm saying what I'm saying is kind of the same thing with do, when you do training in the fall for the MOU. Mm -hmm. I'm anticipating that people who didn't do the training tonight mm -hmm. are going to ask no end of questions. <laughs> and I yes. have two specific members that I told should be on training tonight for that very reason that mm -hmm. are not here or were not here. Mm -hmm. And I would say they're not trained and they shouldn't be enabled until they watch this video. So I'm, I'm just suggesting yeah. that you go a little bit harder on the same kind of process as you do with the MOU. Is that yeah, I, you need to watch the video we and very be likely to say, you know, some way to say that Craig doesn't have to train every single person every single time he gets the question. Yeah. There's a there's a way to say, yes, I watched the video, so I am trained. And even if you ask the director of international in each club to confirm that for you, it'd be easier on mm -hmm. the two mm -hmm. of you than I can see it's going to happen for the next two months. I totally agree, Craig. Yeah. Like this could be a nightmare for you and Jamie. Like I think a note has to go out that this is a new system. Get those of us that have been, uh, you know, have at least sat in here to work through it and say, like, this isn't something we purchased and we get service from. This is a service by volunteer Rotarian. And we've got to work with you to work out some of the glitches. I think we've identified yeah. a few yes. already. We, we have, 100%. yeah. And I don't think that message is evident in the district at all. And I think that's got to get out to the club presidents mm -hmm. because uh, we don't want to totally weary out uh, well-meaning Rotarians who, like, this is going to be tough. So, mm -hmm. I, and I don't think that message is out there. I had no idea till tonight, other than I thought I have the wrong password, that <laughs> this was such a big switch in the system. So if we're gonna mm -hmm. support you, which we want to do, I think you gotta get that message out. We didn't hire some company to come in with a new website and it, there's gonna be glitches in this and we have yeah. to work with you on it. Yeah, and, and that's absolutely yeah. correct. Uh, my, my own philosophy towards some of these things is if you like the soft launch, uh, so rather than put up barriers to people initially, uh, we try and make it pretty easy, but as time goes on, I, I do want to raise that bar. Uh, so, you know, by the time we get to next year, for example, uh, we want people to actually have undergone some some kind of training before we, we class them as, as trained users. But you uh, also don't want to tick off a whole bunch of people because they didn't, they didn't have the right information and they didn't... Uh, they didn't get the grants that they thought they were entitled mm -hmm. to or whatever. Uh, uh -huh, you got to be uh -huh. careful on that, I think. Yeah, we, we absolutely do, for sure. Yeah. That's a constant struggle, even at the old system. Yeah, I agree, Jamie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so Q&A is closed. Anyway, I'm going to sign off, but thank you guys. Okay. Big undertaking, uh, proud of you, and I'll do whatever I can to help. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you Thanks, so much, Lynn. Lynn. Uh, great comments, Thanks. really do appreciate them. I'll take a look at your uh, your club qualification just to see where we sit as soon as we're, we're wrapped here. Okay, good, because <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'll, I'll, yes, I'll you're keen. That <laughs> on the side. I do a lot of work with that in my job. So Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll make it work as a district. Thanks so much. Great. So, so well done, Jamie and Craig. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Yes, very well done. Um, we had 72 register for tonight's session. We, The highest number I saw was 50 participants tonight. So uh -huh. that's actually Pretty good. That's a little good. bit better than yeah. we have had recently. So that's, uh, that's very positive. So, uh, I'm going to stop the recording now and then um, look for an email for me probably tomorrow or I'll send you a link to this recording that will be okay. uh, uploaded. And I would um, 
uh, echo Lynn's comments about getting something out there about who needs to, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, who who really needs to, um, what what are the first steps to get to step forward? Because if we don't get that out there soon, you're going to have you're going to have some challenges ahead of you. Not that you won't anyway, but mm -hmm. I'm just I thinking if you can give them the first three steps that they need to to do. Mm -hmm. You know, one is to build awareness because we only had 50 on tonight. Mm -hmm. There's got to be more than 50 names in your database for previous district and global grants mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would probably need to know, you know, because most people that are involved in that are sort of long timers, veterans, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're going to be the ones that have the hardest trouble, hardest time switching because it's, it's very different. It's going to be a bit of hand holding, but it's, I think yeah. it's worth it. I, I like yeah. what I saw. I yeah. Short term pain for long term gain. Yeah. 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 The other thing, too, is we really didn't uh, necessarily upfront uh, prescribe, uh, you know, a block of training because as much as anything, I was interested in seeing where uh, 